best and the worst part about every single Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies map. Here we go. Starting off, we got the oh oh so infamous Transit. So, I think that the best part about this map is it is probably the most fun map with friends. You know, just leaving your friends behind in like when you take the bus and just leave them. Yeah, it's just a great time with friends. With uh, like with solo, that's the main complaint people have with this map. That's why it's considered so bad. Another good thing about this, it added two new perks. So that being stamina up and double, uh, not stamina up, it added tombstone and double tap too. Tombstone is rather garbage. It's amazing in Cold War, but it's completely different. It's more like Who's Who. And Double Tap 2 is probably one of the best perks of all time. It literally probably is top 5 easily. And it is in every single Zombies map after pretty much until Cold War. I mean, BO4 and Cold War. And Ted... Listen, Ted is a G. He is the most amazing character in Call of Duty Zombies history. And the Transit was a very influential map. It added buildables, you know, Victus, which is awesome. And it's just revolutionary graphics in comparison, new system, and it kind of flopped, but those are the good things about it. Moving on to the bad stuff. Okay, so Transit is infamously bad, but I actually have less bad stuff for it than good stuff. I, yeah, like there's more good stuff that I could come up with than bad stuff, which, it, I think in the standard of the time, transit was considered bad, but the main bad thing has to be the denizens slash fog, they kind of go together, they just restrict your movement, and that's like the whole point of them being there, and the wonder weapon, well yes, technically it's the best wonder weapon, it is very difficult to use and impractical, so it is one of the worst wonder weapons, but also one of the best, but in practicality, it's the worst. And the pack punch system in this map is very finicky. Like, if you have friends, this is why friends are so good in this, it's easy. You can just leave someone in town while you turn on the pack punch. But solo, it is the most frustrating thing in the world. And also, Tombstone is not very good in this. It is kind of garbage, not great, like at all. And a lot of the buildables are kind of drab, and playing by yourself is boring. The Easter egg isn't very good. Otherwise, it's good, but yeah, the worst part about it has got to be the fog and the denizens. Moving on to the O survival map. Starting off with the most popular one, Town. This is crazy because it's a survival map, but most people would agree this is either a B, A, or sometimes even S tier map. It is just probably the most perfect, like, zombie killing experience that there is. That's all it is, is killing zombies. The layout is great, with one central thing which has a pack of punch already on, no power. All the buildings are spread out with perks, except one of them you can't access, but double tap and stamina up are all by themselves, along with tombstone. But yeah, the layout is just great, and I love it. The worst part about town, though, it's the freaking lava. It is so frustrating, and everyone knows it, and it's the most universally accepted fact in the world. Moving on to farm. Farm has got to be the most underappreciated zombies map. People only talk about Bus Evo for it being simple and Town for it being, you know, perfect and also pretty simple as Pack Punch perks. But Farm has less perks and no Pack Punch, but it still has perks. And I think the best part about it is it has a great training area in the town. Like the house is just perfect for camping. If you're not playing Far uh, or Transit, I say Farm. It's really good with friends, that's what I'm going to say, because there's not that many positives about it, I mean, it's fun. If I boot up a game, I'm probably not going to be playing it, but if I'm with friends, it's fun to just stay in that house and, you know, just abuse zombies. It's real fun. And the worst part about it, same with transit, the freaking lava. I think it's even worse than this one, because, like, getting the gavel knuckles and stuff, it's just miserable. Lava has got to be the worst part. So, moving on to Buzz Depot. Buzz Depot is basically a better version of Noct. It is simple, done right. It is actually a, such a fun map. Like, it's so simple, but it's so simple that it's good. Like, I like that, that it's simple. It's so much fun. The only problem, I'd say the worst part about it, it's the freaking weapons just are garbage. It's like, because there's no parts or pack much, it's all about the weapons, and they're all pretty bad, except for like the Golil and the hammer and the RPD. 
but most of them are just garbage, and there's no gavel knuckles or anything, so. Now we got Nuketown. Nuketown, best part about it, the random park drops are actually really cool and intriguing, but I think the best part about it, it is the most recognizable and iconic Call of Duty map. Not just zombies, but Call of Duty map. Zombies and multiplayer, especially multiplayer. It has been in every single Black Ops game. It is the most iconic, and there is no doubt about that. The worst part about it, 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 they did a great job making it look like zombies, but it just doesn't flow well, and the doors are so expensive too. But I think that the flow is just not great, because it's not really a zombies map. You see that with Cold War, but yeah, the flow is the worst part about it. Moving on to everyone's favorite map, Die Rise. The best parts about Die Rise, I'd say, are it's the Wonder Weapon. It is arguably the best Wonder Weapon in Zombies history. It is amazing. The Slicker Fire is so, so good. More good stuff is the pack a punch and power is very easy, and they experimented at least with this map, like the verticality and stuff. It might not be good, but at least they tried something. Moving on to the bad stuff we got in Die Rise is the worst part about it. It is the freaking fact that you fall off the map. Just don't even die to zombies half the time I play this map. I die to falling. It is so stupid. Who came up with this? And why? Are they evil? Like, bro, it is so annoying. Plus, I don't... Everything just looks like trash on this map. It, transit looks bad, but this looks a million times worse. Like, this just looks like straight garbage. No offense, Trayer, but I don't like this map. And another horrible thing is to get back to the first building is so frustrating. You have to do like a million jumps, go up, open a million doors, and it's just not a fun process in any way at all. So <laughs> there you go, there's my analysis of Die Rise. You can tell I don't like this map. People hate transit, but Die Rise is way worse. Way, way, way worse. <laughs> Moving on <laughs> to Mob of the Dead. Mob of the Dead, which is amazing. Another thing it added, it added another perk, which would be an electric cherry, which is very mid. It's good, but it's like probably the very middle of perks, with like maybe Sweet Cola, but Sweet Cola is probably better. Because you kind of need Sweet Cola for electric cherry to be good. Uh, and the Hell's Retriever is the most beautiful thing I've ever laid my eyes on. You can get perked with it, you can kill zombies infinitely with the Hell's Redeemer, the upgrade version, so it is very good. Plus, Mob of the Dead is in, like, the coolest setting ever. Alcatraz Island. The Rock. That is awesome. It's almost as cool as the moon. I think it's second only to the moon. But yeah, it is just great. Brutus is a pretty good boss zombie, but he's kind of a bitch. He gives you a lot of money, and the pack of punch on this map is... Afterlife is also like the most influential thing ever in zombies. It is so good. It's so it's perfect for noob. You don't need to spend money on quick revive. You get three revives. It's great. And it, it also the power system, which is what afterlife is, helps you out with the map. It's just overall great. The worst parts about Mob of the Dead have gotta be just after a while it kinda gets boring, you know, like with your friends, it's around like 30. You're just like, what do we do? So you just end up sitting in the gondola doing a final stand. But that's pretty much my only complaint with this map, besides the worst part about it. The amount the doors cost them. They're so freaking expensive. And there's so many of them to turn on, the, not to turn on the power, but to get the pack punch. There is no power switch. So uh, yeah, I think the worst part has gotta be the amount and the cost of the doors. So, moving on to Buried. The best part about Buried has got to be my Higajaboo baby, Leroy, or Arthur. But if you call him Arthur, you're a loser. Leroy is the 
best NPC just above Ted, just barely. He can open up the map, he can lock down the box, he can kill zombies, he can carry the last crawler, and he's just a little whiny bitch, but oh, I still love him. He's like 20 feet tall, and if you give him booze, he does stuff for you. If you give him candy, he does stuff for you. Basically, a guy, you know. <laughs> so, another great thing about this is the wall buys on like the chalk things unburied the chalk things that you can draw on the thing that gives you a thousand points for each that is overpowered just the amount of money you can get in this map is fantastic i think that the another just this map it has the most content for any map and that is truth it also added vulture aid top three perk i think it's the third best potential window line at jug and the, the paralyzer up to round 70 is the best wonder weapon ever to round 70. After that, it's kind of garbage, but you can still freaking fly with it. That's awesome. But yeah, those are the great stuff about Barry. The only bad part that I can really think of is the witches, the bitches, you know, they steal your points just like women in real life. It's so annoying and it makes me want to be sexist, but I won't because that is bad and I want money from YouTube. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But yeah, the witches are so annoying. The setting is very cool in this map, but I'm gonna have to go with the witches as by far the worst part about this map. Moving on to the one and only Origins. What can I even say about Origins? It's Origins. It's the greatest map of all time. There is almost no doubt about it. It is my personal favorite by a mile. The best part about it, the wonder weapons. The four elemental staffs, the three best wonder weapons, <laughs> the lightning staff, oh, I'm sorry man, it's garbage, but the wind staff, the ice staff, and the fire staff all have their each individual upgrade and building quests, so four people in the game for the first time can have the wonder weapon, aside from like the ray guns, but no one freaking cares about the ray guns. And another great thing about it, one of the best easter eggs of all time. Just amazing. Great setting. It's basically a, an entire campaign inside of a zombie's map. You cannot get better than that. It's Origins. It didn't add any new maps, but it brought back PHD, the only map in BO2 to have it besides freaking Cell Block 8 or whatever the grief map on Mob of the Dead is. But Origins, man, I can't there's literally nothing I can say. This is the culmination of zombies. This is the peak. It started BO3, basically. Like, without this, BO3 would not be the same. And it, this is, like, the most popular map ever, for good reason. But the only, the only bad part about this map, this is going to end off the video, is the Origins mud makes me want to die. Thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to like and subscribe. bo 3s next. Let's get ready. Love you all. Good night. So long. Subscribe. This is Black Folk on Cracker Factor.